Do you feel not 100% in control of your campaigns, or perhaps you're in the stages of even deciding which campaign to begin? Well then, this guide is a perfect first step. If you are well into finding your feet on normal difficulty, feel free to skip this beginner mastery guide and skip to the next video on to how to maximize your advantage on any campaign with any race, even on Legendary. If you do intend to play on Legendary, make sure you watch the follow-up faction focus guides on your race of choice to ensure that advantage is pressed. Quickly speaking of difficulty, play on normal campaigns until you are very comfortable and then move up to hard. Total War Warhammer 2 has its Vortex campaign, where it is recommended that you play Tyrion of the High Elves as your first Lord. Note that different Lords have different starting positions and strengths, so ensure that you do pick Tyrion for your first campaign. If the High Elves are too vanilla, Malekith of the Dark Elves, Krokgar of the Lizardmen, or any of the Skaven DLC choices are good. If you enjoy the Vortex, then purchase the first game so you can access the more popular Mortal Empires. This expanded map makes all the first game's races available, including Grombridzel, the White Dwarf, and Karl Franz of the Empire, which also make great contenders for your first campaign. There is a Chaos Invasion, which comes from the north of the map, which begins around turn 100, but you can also set the difficulty for this or turn it off completely. Once your faction leader is selected, you will be brought to the campaign map. This is where you will spend most of your time simply building, researching, fighting battles on the field before pressing end turn and doing it all over again. You'll start at your faction's capital. Your goal should be to complete this province and never ever lose that faction capital. While other provinces can support your empire, this province should always be your primary recruitment hub Therefore, you do not want it getting taken and its levels being stripped down, because getting it to tier 5 should be your highest priority. This is because only the province capital can build up to tier 5 buildings, which will allow for those equivalent units to be recruited. Minor settlements, on the other hand, can only reach tier 3, making them more suitable for lower tier recruitment or resource generation. The only way to recruit an army is through a lord. You start the game with your faction's legendary lord as the leader, and being a legendary lord means they cannot permanently die. So you want them to live and gain experience as they are a key source of your faction's power. In the early stages, consider holding control and pressing S before a battle and saving it. If you lose your leader or lose a hero, consider reloading because you'll get more chance to hone your skills as well as ensure your characters stay alive and keep giving you power. Your Lord's Army can recruit and replenish their army by standing anywhere in a province. So try to keep your stack at the 20 unit limit and nearly replenished at all times. Aim for only one or two stacks at most in the early game. Don't be afraid to disband your second army in order to keep your finances in check. To move your lord, select them and hold down the right mouse button to see your movement path and remaining movement percentage, which you will need to assume certain stances, but more of that on the next video. When attacking an enemy army or settlement, always ensure you have movement points remaining. If this counter reaches zero, there's a high chance your character will walk out and stop right in front of them, leaving you in a vulnerable position. If attacking with two armies, ensure you can see the reinforcement line. First move up your reinforcing army, and then check with your main army that you can see the reinforcement line. If you can't, readjust, otherwise you will be going in undermanned. To see the movement range of enemy lords, simply remove your cursor over the top of them. Make sure if you move within this, you do have enough room left to retreat to your territory, because losing twice in the same turn will result in the army and everyone in it being destroyed. A new lord can be raised by selecting the settlement you want to recruit that lord in. Be sure to garrison them on the same turn you build them to keep them safe inside the walls and then recruit a new army. If you have somehow misplaced a Lord, Hero or Settlement, you can use these convenient drop down menus here, which will send you straight to the province or character of your choice. Press the R button on your keyboard to make the characters on the map move much quicker. 
Other than lords, the other character type are heroes. They can back up your lord's army on the battlefield, but can also roam the map independently and scout around the map without incurring any diplomatic penalty, unless of course you try to sabotage an enemy army or province. When moving an army, however, you'll want to rest your cursor over your destination and just see who the owner is. If that territory belongs to a neutral faction, you will incur a military trespassing penalty. This will make them distrust you for several turns and penalize you when trying to broker future deals, as well as make them more likely to declare war on you. Simply negotiate a military access pact with them to negate this effect. In general, it is a good idea to check the diplomacy screen once per turn. Here, you can quick search who is available to trade, who likes you, who hates you, and you can generally survey the area by clicking on the map and using WASD to pan around. Hover the cursor over the face to see a breakdown of relations. When you've selected another faction, you can hover over the map to see their own interactions and their relationship with other neighbors. If you declare war on someone they really like, they'll hold it against you. Likewise, if you sign treaties with someone they are at war with, tensions will boil. Non-aggression pacts, military access, and trade are all great once you can get them, but try to avoid alliances because unless you really need them, they can drag you into unwanted wars and actually make confederating with friendly nations even harder. Also, don't make deals with anyone you're going to attack soon. First, end your treaties and just wait 10 turns so you will not incur any penalties. Although you can eventually recover from your territory, it's best to not do this or at least wait some turns to minimize this effect. As a general rule of thumb, try to stick with likely allies, meaning if you're a good faction, make relations with other good factions. Whilst the Tomb Kings seem to be fairly neutral, if you're the Empire or the Elves, you probably don't want to be making friends with vampire counts. As a rule of thumb, it's best to fight your battles on the battlefield. The next video contains the strategies on how to win on all difficulties, but in short, select a unit and press and hold the right mouse button down to get them into formation. Keep your units apart and do not send multiple groups of infantry straight at a single unit, as this creates a big ball of infantry that will be flanked, giving the enemy a massive bonus in melee, as well as providing them with a nice big blob of targets for their arrows. Instead, set up your formation with at least two rows of units, allowing you to choose your engagements. Control A to select your whole formation, and then Hold ALT and left click to move the entire formation up the map. Once the battle starts, the balance of power slider will show just how much power you have on the field versus the enemy. This is a measure of the units that are alive, their strength, remaining ammo, and anything else that might work in your favor. Just remember that total war battles aren't about wiping out the enemy. Well, while you should run down as many enemies at the end as possible, battles are won by inflicting an army loss penalty on the army, by them losing too much strength on the battlefield, and therefore the whole army routing. Flanking, that is shooting or charging units in the back, is the cornerstone to most Total War games. If your unit routes another unit, instead of chasing it down, look around for a nearby unit that's tied up and charge them, dealing serious damage to them and their morale. Undead factions are unique. They are fearless, but when their morale is depleted, instead of fleeing, their HP will slowly crumble. So it's best to whittle their units down to only a few models left, and instead of trying to kill those 9 leftover zombies, instead aim at another group of 90 zombies to make better use of your ammunition. Whilst killing the enemy general is great, it should not be your top priority, and is more of an opportunity though if you do, it will inflict a major morale penalty on the opposing army. Most factions can field casters of one sort or another, using magical spells to buff your units, diminish the enemy, or cast devastating damage. The casting resource, or mana equivalent in this game, is the Winds of Magic. It is a pool that sits in the bottom right hand corner and goes up to 30. It will eventually go down to zero, but constantly replenishes based on the pool and the available charges left, as you can see. The lower you let this number go, the slower it charges, so there is some incentive to keep it relatively high. Double clicking any spell will overcast it. Depending on the spell, this can either be great or a waste of time. 
Either way, it incurs a risk of miscast, meaning it will fail and harm your caster. There are skills each caster can learn which will mitigate this risk. Many laws of magic are effective in campaign, however, fire is notably good for beginners and very effective thanks to its burning head spell. The colored circle next to each province indicates the climate, green being suitable for your faction, orange having some penalties, and red where your population absolutely hate and do not thrive correctly. Two factions of the same race can still have different climate preferences. This means where you choose to expand should ideally have green provinces and if you have to, orange. Red on the other hand should be avoided in the early stages unless the area is completely defensible because it will take longer to develop these provinces and it will be harder to keep in order. Once you've won all your battles, enqueued new units and built all your structures, research some technologies, check your diplomacy and end your turn. And that's Total War. There will be much more on province management and expansion, so please stay tuned to see how to take your game to the next level and be able to thrive with any faction on any difficulty, even Legendary. My name is Ryder, please consider subscribing to Elven Plot Armor, and thanks so much for watching.